All right, guys, I think I am back and I am in the correct way now. Hopefully you guys can see me. I will give everyone a few minutes to get back on with us. We had so many people join us. you back Melissa and hello Nicole so I'm gonna give everyone just a few minutes to make sure that we are all back with us today this is a lot wider screen than my normal videos so I'm using my iPhone today and normally I use a Nikon to record. So you guys get to see like a lot larger screen. So I'm gonna give everyone just a couple more minutes to see if we can get everybody back with us and then I will get started. Oh my goodness, from Australia, Melinda? That's awesome. What time is it there in Australia? Alright, so I think we have about everyone that was on before, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be making a wall decor today, and I wanted to show you some of these other wall decors uh, that I've picked up over the time and have thought about making but never got around to it, and then show you the ones that are the one that we're going to make today. So these wall decors are all from the Dollar Tree, and they are obviously a dollar. So you can get lots of ideas from it. Like this one here has a mason jar and it has a, a strawberry on it. And you can actually peel this off with your uh, like tool that you use to pick things up with. I don't even know what it's called. Like a spatula tool, that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, so you can use a spatula to get this strawberry piece off and then you would sand this down and cover it up. Then there's these ones that are just blank. These are great to use for really anything at all. They always have um, ha decorations for like holidays and things like that. So this one uh, is a current one. So if you wanted to go pick up something that was Halloween-ish, get this one. There's this one here that has the little bunny on it for Easter. And so it's super easy to take these apart and then you can repurpose them. I've even seen sometimes where uh, people have left some of it, uh, like this bunny is super, super cute with this little cotton tail there. Uh, so sometimes you can keep them, and sometimes they're cute as is, but uh, other times you want to change them up. This one here is obviously a 4th of July one, but you could really use this for anything that involves stars. And so you would just sand it down and, and cover it with paper. And then this one here is also cute when I've done this one, uh, use this one for like birthday parties and things like that, where you have used the arrows pointing to different places. So lots and lots of variety and options that you can find at the Dollar Tree to start as your base. This is the one that I'm going to use today. It is a Thanksgiving one and I did go ahead and sand it down. You want to make sure you get all of the glitter off and anything else that's on there so it will stick 
um, very easily. I use my Tim Holtz sander that I put a brand new sanding on it because it was ooh, it was very worn uh, after I did all this. So you can just sand it down and um, you then have a good base to work with. So my plan is to uh, use these sheets of paper that I cut before uh, hand so we can uh, avoid that. And then I also went through the thickers that's a part of the upgraded kit and figured out what letters I could write. And so the wall decor that I want to do says dream big, love yourself and write your own story. I think it's going to be great with the stickers that I have left. I can incorporate like this little, looks like a little telephone to me, uh, live your best life and, uh, you know, add in a couple of these other things to decorate it. So I went ahead and made sure I had enough thickers for each one of these and I'm going to include those probably in the bigger ones and then decorate the other ones with um, just stickers and maybe some of these uh, I've got some two by twos here that will fit so I'm, I don't really have a plan outside of the fact that I'm going to be using these thickers to write those words and I've cut these out. Alright, so I do recommend using really any adhesive that you have and you can just put it right on. You don't have to use liquid adhesive. What I tend to do is use my ATG to put the paper down and then the corners I will go in with liquid adhesive. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these down and then I wanted to say hi to everyone that has joined in. There are quite a few ladies that have joined us. So hi, Penny. It looks like Joe's on as well and she's monitoring. Um, and I think that, uh, I wanted to see what time it was. 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. So it's tomorrow for you. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad that you were able to join us. Oh, Melinda. All right, so I just put this paper down. You can see here that um, I do go ahead and go off the edge because it does make it a little bit easier to uh, cut off and have those edges cut off. So, hi, Kay from Arizona. I have a couple of uh, friends who said that they were um, going to join us and they live in Arizona. And Margaret from Austin, Texas. You guys are all over Ohio, all over the country and So really no rhyme or reason. I just kind of picked out the colors. Now I'm not gonna give you guys measurements on this because all I did was just take my T-square ruler, which I always use, oh there it is, and just measured from the top down and cut the paper that way. So depending on what you are using, you would just use the measurements from there to um, cut your paper to size. I guess I could go ahead and put a piece up on all of this. I know it's very, very fun to watch me put adhesive on wood. It's exactly what you guys came to see, right? Hi, Kim from South Carolina. So I did have these organized. This is the only one that has words on it, so I want to make sure that I have it in the right direction and these do work better if you use ones that don't have a um, I totally totally was short on that so let's see what we're gonna do we're gonna start down here at the bottom 
And then I will probably use like either washi tape or something right there to hide that seam. Right? No mistakes in scrapbooking, just ways to embellish. All right, so from there, I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to cut off pretty close to the edge. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm going to use my sander, which I know can be an extremely annoying sound. So hopefully we can get that done pretty quickly. I might not sand them all on screen. I might just sand one since I know it's almost like chalkboard on or nails on a chalkboard, or at least it is for me. I don't know about you guys. Does anybody else have like a really annoying sound that they hate in scrapbooking? My friend Kate, when we would go to retreats together, she would ask for us to tell her when we were going to sand and she would leave the room because it was so annoying to her that she just couldn't even be in the same room. Anybody else have something like that where they're just, they can't stand to be around a certain noise in scrapbooking? All right. Okay, so once I got all of those extra edges off and again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to sand it down a little bit. And so the best way to sand it is to fold it over so that it's on the edge and then sand. And like I said, I probably won't do all of these just because that sound is annoying to me. I know it's got to be annoying to you guys. And so once I have it um, rounded around there, around the edge. Uh, that's when I take my liquid adhesive and just fill in anything that is left. And then I would just hold it for a second, make sure that that liquid adhesive is secure. And then I'm going to do it on the other side as well, just to show you guys that again. So again, you just kind of tuck it down so that it folds over. And then with the sander, You're basically tearing off the paper that is extra to that to that side there. And then taking your liquid adhesive and sticking it right in there and holding it down. Just enough. So this will cause lots and lots of dust on your scrapbook table if you do it on your scrapbook table usually I do this part um, actually it's kind of sitting out watching TV and then uh, from there usually I'll have like a box like a box that you get from like Amazon or you know one of your packaging boxes I just sit with it on my lap and sand away and so that it fits really nicely and it wraps around so that when it's hanging on the wall um, you won't be able to tell that there's wood on the side. This one came with this little burlap piece and so um, I will take these holes here and I'll take my paper piercer and just pierce a hole in through the hole that's on the board there and then stick those through just like they were before. And I like 
like to do this in the beginning that way when I am decorating I have that as well so I don't put anything around it so I used my ATG gun um, for the main part of it and then I use art glitter glue which you can purchase um, lots of different places but it does it can't be shipped in the winter or the summer um, so uh, this is actually a good time to purchase it because it can't be shipped in extreme cold or extreme hot <laughs> you love my big pink mat? Yes. I am definitely a big pink pink person, Penny. Um, this mat is uh, 35 by 24. So it is a huge, huge, uh, huge mat. It's a good size because I'm a double page scrapbooker, so I can fit two 12 by 12 sheets of paper in there. Um, Gina, I am making a wall decor. So I started out with uh, a item that I purchased from the Dollar Tree and I sanded it all and then I am going to cover it with this beautiful pattern paper from this month's collection and um, gonna make I don't know it, it's one of those things that I my only plans that I had was I was gonna cover it with this paper and I was going to use these thickers so let's go ahead and start putting these stickers down and you can see that I crossed them out in to be sure that I had enough when I made the other layout that I posted and that should um, be up on the scrapbookingstore.com's YouTube page you can go on there and see a layout that I made uh, for some photos of a friend's daughter's uh, like family photos and it was you know those single photos of just her all right so here's my put this here three sayings that I want to put on here and like I said at, off screen I'll go and um, finish standing that I just don't want to do that with you guys on here because it would annoy the crap out of me and you know just for me it's uh I, I wouldn't like it, so I'm assuring, I'm assuming you guys wouldn't either. Um, let's see, the mat penny is uh, 36 by 24. Yeah, 36 by 24. So there, it's uh, 24 this way. No, I'm sorry, 36 this way, 24 this way. All right, so I think what I'm gonna start with is write your own story because I think that should be in this big one what do you guys think write your own story here I don't think I'm gonna put any saying on this one just because it has the words so I was thinking write your own story on the floral and love yourself down here in the pink and maybe dream big up here what do you guys think I think that would look good so dream big write your own story love yourself and Joe is telling you guys to make sure that you comment so that's how you're gonna get a chance to win the free mystery gift so let's see. I'm gonna start with love yourself down here And I never center ever very well. So we're just going to kind of wing it. So let's see. I think I'm going to start with yourself. And I think I'm going to skip over the pink ones. I like the blue one. Um, because there's pink in the background. So let's see if we can... It's like an orangey, corally color, but not like a pink color. I think I'm going to skip over these, if I can. We'll see. <laughs> yes, that's that's me as well, Tina. I like to do things that are simple and make a huge impact because uh, if you give this as a gift or 
if you hang it up on your in your house, then um, people think that you spent a lot of time or a lot of effort went into it, and really it's something that's pretty simple. And I always like simple, simple things. I'm just trying to pick out letters that uh, won't, um, let's see, that, so they're not close together. So I think I'm going to try to do this blue one, and then for the V, I can use this one, maybe. Or maybe I could do the yellow. See, this is the issue with letters that are not all the same color because you've got to figure things out and um, what where things go. All right. So I actually did pretty well on the like centering of that. I'm very surprised with myself because I don't do that very well. All right. So love yourself here. And I think I'm going to put dream big. No. This is going to be write your own story. So I think I'm going to have to do that in two, two lines. Let's see. Nope, that's not going to work. Thank you, Penny. I think it's a fabulous idea as well. I tend to do these quite a bit when um, I am think that I'm going to be crafty and I don't want to actually do a scrapbook page because sometimes you, you want to be in the crafty mood and you want to do things crafty, but you don't necessarily want to, you know, work with photos. And so this is always a good way to you know, just kind of get out there and see what else you can make. Let's see, right? Your. Okay, so I'm going to have to use this green one. I might switch it with that one. Your. I just don't like the way the green sticks up on that one. Where are you going? And if you follow me at all on my YouTube channel, you'll know that most of the time I have to pick up my So, uh, Terry, you think that it should be on the one that has all the words? This white one? Your own story. I know it, it is really hard to see it on that on that floral. That's too. And that's the great thing about using thickers because uh, you know they don't stick very well, so we can always move them around. Story. Oh, I'm glad, Penny. It's sometimes it look look. I got it all pink. That's not going to work. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Let me change this out. Nope, we can't do the pink down there. Uh, maybe we'll have to. Oh, you think a different background altogether, like not using this floral and doing something else? Yeah, there are just... Yeah, you can't see the alphabets at all, really. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see what other pattern paper we can put down. I have this butterfly one. It's kind of dark, though. I'm not a big fan of the animal print, which I know is really popular. And there's this one. What do you guys think about the plaid? I think that butterfly would be just as busy as the floral. Oh, I have this pink one that has like 
um, like a ledger paper on it. And corals on the back of it. I don't think the swans would be good. Oh, that's a good idea too, um, Penny, it, to just paint the thickers. What about the yellow one? Also have a stripe. That might be hard to see too. And there's this floral. Yes, that's, I think would be awesome, um, Kathy. I think your daughter would be, it would be a great gift idea for um, any girl to put in her room. I think it would be a great gift for like kids who are going off to school, like to college and things like that. All right, so what if I did the yellow one here and also cut a, another piece of this little floral because I really like this floral. Would the floral come through if I did it smaller? So those florals are so big. Sometimes I love big florals but then sometimes I'm like, eh, then I'm gonna have two florals together. So you guys are making me rethink everything. True. I could cut a piece of color cards. Um, I could use this one, which is close to. I know it's not a solid cardstock, but that might be better. Using the just the light pink. What do you guys think? Can you cut a piece of solid cardstock smaller than the floral and put it on top? Oh, like um. Uh, like give it a border, the floral border. I like that idea. What do you guys think about that? You could have the floral and put a different color on top to offset it. Yeah, Kathy. What do you guys think? Do you think I should do this like polka dotted paper? And, or do you guys like it with the floral? Um, Framing it. You guys like the idea of framing it? Then I would need to find a different one. I'll do the swan one in the smaller one. Probably get a strip of that. Yes, the pale pink one. Move the large flower print up one row. So put the flower print here. All right, so let's see. So I probably need this to be. Do two and a quarter. One of the things that I always think about when I like measure things in scrapbooking is telling my like high school teacher that I would never use math. And boy was I wrong because sometimes you have to calculate these like half inches and quarter inches and So what do you guys think about that? I kind of lose all of the florals with the, when I, um, when I do that border. Well, it's a good thing that we have lots of paper so we can figure it out. Let's see. This is two and a half, and this one is two and a quarter. So let's try this. We can see which one we like better. So one and a quarter. Okay, make it work. This one's gonna be two and three quarters. Three quarters. Okay, 
So, should we do this floral piece here, which would be like this? Should you feel like I cut like? Let's see if I can cut another piece where I can get more of the florals. This one better because I can get I can get two full solid florals and those pink ones right there. Okay, so put the, that one there. Should I do a border like this or the entire thing with the polka dots? What do you guys think? So Kathy likes it with the floral frame. So like this. So you guys like it with a floral frame and this uh, floral up here, or should I do a different um, piece of paper up here? So another suggestion was to change up these words all together and use a different um, letters or different fonts, which I, see the issue with that is that, okay, I have white, but this is not white. It's like that, you know, creamy color that, uh, Simple Stories likes to use in their colors. And I don't think I have a lot of cream. I'm not a big cream fan. So change the alphabet to blue. Oh, I don't know if I have a blue at all. Match. So I keep all my alphas just to, since we're talking about it, in these like paper keepers uh, that holds 12 by 12. I do it by color. So I have this. That's like an aqua blue. Plus I've got to have an alphabet that has a ton of um, letters on it since spelling out a big word. Oh, what about this one? guys think about the glittery color. Another suggestion was black. Change it out to black. That's too like awfully. I think that's the only choice I have. I do black. I wonder if I have enough of these. What the black with the gold? So we have the green glitter. I have two of these, so we should have enough of those. Or the black with the gold. What do you guys think? So the issue. 
issue with taking out some of the alphabet is I do not have enough thickers um, in this set to do that. So I wouldn't be able to take out and like only use certain colors just because this is what I have to work with over here. All right, so I have the, this green glitter, which you can, I have a little H here, or the black and gold, which let's see. So what do you guys think? I got one black and gold, I got one green. hard to see the black and gold like on my screen all right let's see I'm gonna use just spell out a word and we'll go with this black and gold and see if it looks okay so Apparently I used all the R's. Whenever I pick up alphas like this, like basic colors at Tuesday morning, I always like to pick up a second set because I know I will use them. Well, the R's are down here. All right. This alphabet's a lot larger too, like a lot taller. So we liken this the way the black looks or I'm going to write out I wonder what I used because I used all the S's and the U's. Your. Okay, so that's that one. And then we'll pull this one out and see what it looks like. In this one, so you guys can see both of them. Oops. I do think these blue, tealy, glittery colors, whatever they are, um, coordinate a little bit better than black um Dora I was saying earlier that I the only thing that I worry about with white is that everything else in here is that cream color that um, simple stories likes to use so it's not really white so if I put white on it it would be very stark color difference than um, the cream color that's on here. I don't know why I still have this H in my hand. All right. Why, why, why? Okay, so there we go. So now we have two choices. What do you guys think? Yeah, I look through my stash and I'm not a big ivory person, so I don't have a whole lot of ivory. So I probably need to add some to my stash to my stash. Oh, Gina says that um I should do my own like each one. So do this one here with the thickers that we have, do this one in um a different one, and then the uh dream big. I can't remember which one I was gonna put it on have it a completely different alphabet as well. So that, that way it doesn't, whatever I use here doesn't stand out. I like that idea. All 
right, so I got a couple people saying the green looks better. And I think I agree with that. So, let's see. Let's keep writing. I have a second set of these as well, which is why I picked it out. So, um, Joe, how long do I have? Is it an hour that I'm supposed to be on here? Wait. Because we're coming up to, um, oh, so maybe I should do the black at the top with the dream big. That's a good compromise. Paper pizza. Probably what I'll do. Oh, are they the same? I'll put, pull it out and see. Time fly, does fly when you're doing these things. We're already 45 minutes in and I haven't even like got anything glued down. All right. I don't think that if they are different, that they're that much of a difference that I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. And then up here, we've said that we try the black. So let's see. So you think this should go here on this one or up here on the teal? Yes, I do uh, tend to Frankenstein, my thickers, when uh, when I'm scrapbooking, because uh, I love them as well. I think they're the best for titles. All right, so what do we think? So let's see. Catch up on these. What do you guys think of? So Joe did not give me a time. I asked if I only had an hour and she didn't answer. So I'm going to go with, let's go with it and figure out along the way. All right. So I haven't glued anything down so that they are still a little crooked. Probably do that off camera. I'm going to pull out this sticker sheet. See what I have left. And I have some of the washi tape as well from the upgraded kit. Which is super cute washi tape. I wonder if I could get that in the center there. No, but I think this washi tape is see-through. The one thing I don't like about washi tape, well, there's lots of things that I don't like about washi tape, but the see-through aspects of the washi tape is, yeah, see, I can't use that because it's see-through. I'm gonna have to cut like a quarter inch strip, which is also my jam for covering and hiding imperfections. All right, so let's look at here. Like I said, I'm gonna put these down with my art glare glue off camera. Um, so, but I really like this uh, sticker here that says, live your best life. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I thought we could put this like 
right here and up here. Oh, I like it up there. What do you guys think? And then I love this like um, little moped bike. And so really it's just, you know, making it work. I like these houses too. So I feel like dream big. It's like a, a house thing. I wonder if I could put these two like right here. What do you guys think? There at the top. Just kind of sticking them down lightly so that I can figure out what I want to do. Um, so what you'll notice too is that dream big, love yourself, both of those are on this sticker sheet, and that's how I uh, came up with these titles. So if you're looking for a title for your scrapbook layouts, I always say look towards your sticker sheet because there might be something that is on your sticker sheet that you love, uh, like this love yourself. I wouldn't necessarily make that my title because it's so small, but you could absolutely do it with stickers or with other items. You're very welcome, Kathy. You know, I don't feel like I'm creative. Um, I have taken the like left brain, right brain. Um, I don't know what they call it, the, the quiz or whatever you want to say in regards to it. And um, I am definitely a left brain person. So I uh, do a lot of analytical. My job is very analytical. Um, and so when I come into doing scrapbooking and things like that, I am very uh, analytical with that as well. Like I tend to follow my, to follow sketches. I love following sketches because, you know, work's already done for me and I can just play with paper because that's all I want to do is play with paper. And so I still get to be able to be creative without, you know, being a, having to do or come up with things all on my own. I wanted to incorporate some of these squares right here. But I don't know which ones. And I really like this, this airplane. I feel like the airplane needs to be like up here. It goes with the dream big thing too, right? And um, this, I'm going to give this as a gift. So now that I'm looking at it, this might be good to a space to put um, the girl's name that I'm going to give this to. I'm, you know, she's an 11 year old girl, uh, one of my friend's daughters. And so maybe I'll use this pink space here to like write her name in a different thickers. Um, this is also when you're done with all of it, I do highly recommend that you uh, Mod Podge the whole thing. So everything stays on. You can get Mod Podge at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, any craft store. And um, I'm gonna put this butterfly right here though. So with butterflies, or really any flying animal, what I like to do, and I'm, this is not my tip in by any means. I think tons of people have done it. I couldn't even tell you where the idea originated from so but what i like to do is put some fun foam or pop dot or whatever you use to pop up your images and i will put them on the edge you can see there it's on the edge all the way to the edge, but I didn't put it in the center, like where the body is of the um, butterfly. And when you stick it down, you're going to bend the sticker a little bit to put the body down. So I'm going to bend 
kind of where the body is. You're also looking to see where your pop dots or fun foam is. So you have that body there. And you stick that the body down first. So make sure that that's down. And then stick the wings down. And sometimes you have, do have to use a little liquid adhesive in the center. Um, and then it gives it a, like a movement of the butterfly. So I usually do that with all creatures that fly. And I really like this wording too. But I do, before I go any further, I need to cut. I'm going to cut this. You know. So, striped paper is the perfect um, cover up for anything. Cut it in a quarter inch strip, super small. See how small that is? And. Uh, like I said, I didn't put these stickers down really firmly because, you know, I like to change my mind often. And so I'm going to cover up this little boo-boo here with this quarter inch strip. And it hides all the flaws. It will hide all of the things that uh, you doesn't line up correctly. There we go. And then I'll cut it off later. And then it actually gives us plates for this purse to rest and this uh, little motorbike here. This is also a great idea um, if you love a kit uh, like this items here, the Simple Stories I Am collection. But sometimes I feel like some of these things, like, I don't know what I would do with some of these items, you know? Like, um, houses, sweaters, I mean, I could see putting it on some things, but sometimes it's hard to find layouts to do that with. So, you know, making a wall decor with this uh, items are something that you can do and showcase all that beautiful paper and that beautiful items without necessarily you know, making a scrapbook page with it. I think this is the, I need some books on here. I don't know where. I feel like I'm running out of room. I have too much cute stuff going on. Okay, what's the books? Well, maybe right here. Because I feel like that goes with the story, right? Like write your own story and then some books. That's one that I like. All right, guys. So I think I am going to wrap it up here. Like I said, I'm off camera going to finish up if you missed it in the beginning. All I did was I cut these two towards the end so that's sticking over just a little bit. And then I took my Tim Holtz sander and sanded it down so that it looks like this on the edge. And I will also um, use liquid adhesive on these letters, straighten them all out. And um, I'm not going to put her name on here just for privacy reasons. I don't want her name on here. I don't know that it's a big deal, but um, so I'll finish all of this off off camera and then I will take a picture of it and post it in the group. So before I get off, does anyone have any questions, thoughts? lost all comments so okay there we go now we got some comments coming in okay thank you so much Tina you're welcome Kathleen thanks for joining us today oh I'm glad you guys love the projects 
and love the way that this turned out. Like I said, um, the Dollar Tree is a great way to get lots of ideas. Like this one here is the fall one. So this one is currently out in the Dollar Tree, the one that I used. But any of the holidays, you can go in and get different ones. So if you wanted to do this big mason jar one, there's this one here that has just the three signs that you can very easily, these are just stapled on the back, so you could take them apart. You could put them in a different configuration if you want. Um, the only thing that you really have to worry about is using a sander to make sure you get all the glitter glue or the glitter that's on here, making sure you get all of that off. So some of these are super cute. Like this is probably my favorite one that's directly there. I actually hang this up at Easter time with the little um, carrots and the little bunny. I just love this, you know, old timey truck and things like that. Um, this one, my nephew just picked up for Halloween. He got uh, guinea pigs recently, so he wanted to decorate their um, pen. So we got this one to put in their pen. And then they also have, they always have just plain square ones. So you don't even need to have a shape. You can just sand this down and you can, um, you know, put two pieces of paper here, put a strip of paper, however you want it. I mean, it becomes really a, you know, a canvas to do anything at all. You can even do it this way because you're going to be covering up these papers and it would just be, if you have a, like a big crocodile or things like that, uh, you could cut through it and, and hang it up that way. Or you can staple some ribbon on the back. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can make these work either either or and then one more is this um, uh, more summer please with this mason jar it's a little bit different than the other one. Oh, and this isn't a mason jar like a with a mason jar with a handle I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it would be called um, but yeah you can definitely use these these peel off super easy this is just press board so it's you know not really anything that's um, too difficult to work with and just great great items and super cheap because they're a dollar and then we get to showcase our scrapbooking supplies in items like this. Oh, I love that. The, um, in either one of these, like this big mason jar or this little one. I like that idea. Um, I think that was Kathy that said that. Catching fireflies um, in this one. Yeah, catching or catching bugs in this one. This one would be cute. Um, and you could even, you wouldn't, you don't necessarily have to cover the entire thing up. You could just cut out a piece of paper that fits around this pink part here and put that in there. And then you could use the rest of it, you know, as it is. So lots and lots of ideas. And you know, the Dollar Tree is the best place to go. And I do uh, will tell you that there are tons of DIY um, ideas on YouTube to check out. So uh, you need to go very quickly to get things. Like right now the Christmas stuff is starting to come out, which is crazy because it's only September. But if you wanted to get ideas for Christmas or get, I, get these things for Christmas, like Christmas shapes, uh, you'll need to go now to get them because they do come out and uh, very quickly and they sell very quickly because of all those DIY items on YouTube. Which if you go down that rabbit hole, uh, good luck with that because I have spent many, many hours watching those <laughs> DIY uh, Dollar Tree things. You guys are very welcome. I'm so glad that you were able to join us. Uh, Joe, I believe, is going to uh, randomly draw a name for the random uh, kit. I think it's a kit. It'll be a prize. She's going to draw a name for a prize uh, from everyone that commented in the group today and joined us along with this live. I do believe this live will also be posted on uh, the YouTube channel so that you guys can Go back and watch it if you choose to if you want to get um, ideas or get more details about uh, what i did you can do that there all right guys i hope everyone has a great evening or a good morning for uh those of us that are <laughs> over there uh at, at 10 o'clock in the morning or now 11 o'clock in the morning um i thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope that you have 
a great afternoon, evening, and a great weekend coming up. And hopefully you get lots of scrapping done. All right, bye guys.